What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to Axios tutorial video, where we'll cover an awesome HTTP library by the name of Axios, which makes data fetching a breeze and is a great alternative to good old fetch API. While we can use Axios in vanilla JS as well, in this project, we'll use it in the context of React. So my assumption is that you are quite comfortable with React library. So things like use effect, use state, and all that. If you need a refresher, I have entire tutorial on React, and I'll leave the link in the description. In order to follow along, you will need a star project, and you can find it in my GitHub. Just look for this repo, Axios Tutorial React. And once you get here, just pick whichever option you prefer. In my case, I'm going to go with download option. Then I'm going to navigate back to my desktop. I'll set it up over here. And I'll probably rename it. I'm just going to go with Axios. I want to open up my text editor, which is Visual Studio Code. And then it's my preference to always set it up side by side. So I'll set up the text editor and browser side by side. Now this is a straight up react project. Basically, I used create react app. I just added some boilerplate. So we can save a little bit of time and focus only on the logic. And uh, we want to go with npm install and npm start right away. And if you take a look at the source one, you'll find over here, a components folder, where there's only one, the title one, which you'll see in a second, and examples. So this is where we'll do all of our work. So we have first request all the way to interceptors. Again, there is already some boilerplate, so we don't have to waste our time on that. And you'll also find the final one. So this is a complete project, if you ever need a reference. And effectively, the way we'll do our work, we have app.js, or at the moment, notice we just have the title, and we'll import the file, for example, first request, and we'll display the results on the screen, and then we'll slowly start setting up the logic over here. That is going to be the idea. And like I said, if you take a look at the final one, you'll find the examples, so the same folder, only in this case, it's a complete code. So this is a finished project. So if you want to run this, you can definitely do so. Or you can just double check your code, if you ever need a reference. And if your result is exactly the same, essentially, if you see Axios tutorial in the browser, we can start exploring Axios library in the project root. You'll also find README with all of the steps we're going to take during the project. And the first thing I want to mention is the docs. So if you ever want to reference the official docs of the Axios library, here is the link. Then after that, we want to worry about the install. And if we're using vanilla JS project, then we can simply go with this script tag. But since in our case, we're using react project, we might as well go with npm instead. And the command you're looking for is npm install Axios. Now, I already added this particular library to the project. And you can definitely see that if you take a look at the package JSON. But nonetheless, why don't we install it one more time together? Of course, this is up to you. But in my case, I'll showcase that. Of course, we can use the command and everything going to work as expected. And I also want to go with npm start. Now I'll close the terminal, I don't think I'll need it anymore. As far as the first request, we want to import Axios. And then we just need to decide which HTTP method we want to use. So if we want to get resources from the server, we want to go with dot get so Axios, that is going to be the instance. And then we want to pass in the URL. And if we have different methods, then you can clearly see what is the method name. So for post, 
we're going to use Axios post. And in that case, of course, we'll need to provide more info as far as the method. It's not just going to be the URL, but we'll cover that a little bit later. So you just need to decide what functionality you want to perform as far as the server is concerned. So whether you want to get the resources, add the resources and all that. And depending on that, you'll choose a method. Now, if you don't provide the method after Axios, so the instance by default is going to be get. And in that case, we simply need to pass in the URL. So if you don't add that get explicitly, by default, it's always going to be get anyway. So we go with Axios. And then again, for the last time, we need to pass in the URL. Now, this does return a promise. And the data is going to be located in the data object. And when it comes to error, it's going to be located in the error dot response. And essentially, our logic is going to look something like this, where we're going to use use effect, and we'll pass in the function, in this case, fetch data. And I right away set it up as a sync, since this does return a promise. And I'll stick a wait in front of Axios. So we import Axios from Axios, then we set up the function, and we'll stick a wait in front of the Axios. Notice here, I'm just going with default option. To get one, we pass in the URL, show the server we want to use, and then we'll wait for response. And after that, I'll log the response, as well as the error, just so you have a better understanding. So now let's start setting this up where I want to close the final, and I want to go to app.js. And first, let's get the first request. So you want to import the first request from the examples, because in there, we already have the boilerplate code, we'll just need to add the functionality. Now, in my case, I'll right away call this a setup. And I won't change that name. So essentially, in the following videos, I'll just change the path. Keep in mind that all of them have been exported as default. So it doesn't really matter. So let's go here to examples, then first request. And then I want to render that right underneath the title. And then in the console, we should see some dummy code, just so we can see that everything works. So in here I have first Axios request. So now let's navigate here. And you'll notice the URL. Now this URL points to my server. So I purposely set the server up for my React course for vanilla JS, just so we can practice data fetching. Now there is a limit. So if you'll see in a console, a 429 response, we'll have to wait for 15 minutes and try again. And if you want to take a look at the other endpoints that are available, just navigate to course API. And these are your options. And like I said, we're going to be using this one. And essentially, this just returns an array of products and then each product is an object. So that should be our result. And effectively, we won't display anything on a screen. We just want to make sure that we get back the same result. So I want to showcase how we can fetch these products from this particular URL using Axios. So let's start working on that where first, we want to get the Axios. So right after the user effect import, we want to go with Axios from and then Axios library, which we just installed. And then we already have the use effect. So now we just want to set up the function. I'm going to call this function fetch data. And it's going to be a sync right away. We won't pass any parameters in here. But we do want to set up try and catch. And again, this is not specific to Axios. We just need to keep in mind that this is a sync. And using try catch is a nice way how we can handle errors. Similarly, how we would use it with fetch again, this is not unique to Axios. So let's go right away with try and catch. And since we have a sync, we can just go with const and then response. And you know what, let me close the sidebar, go with the response here, then await, then Axios, and then for probably the fifth time or sixth time, or maybe the 10th time, we want to pass here the URL 
that's the first argument that we always want to pass in. So then let's log right away response, just so we can see what happens. Right away, also set up the error. And error will be located in this error object under the response property. So let me copy this sucker. Let's go with dot and then response. And then let's keep on moving. And instead of log, let's go with fetch data. Let's invoke. And at this point, it says response is not defined. Okay, so we have response here. Ah, oh, my bad. It shouldn't be response and response. It should be error and then response. My bad. And now check it out. In the console, we have this giant object with lots of useful info. For example, we can get the status as well as status text. But what we're looking for is the data property. Essentially, every time the server will send something back, which in our case is that product array, is going to be located in the data. So either you can destructure it here. So instead of going response, you can just set up the, the structure and look for data. Or of course, we can assign a new value. So in the following examples, we'll most likely take a look at the data option as well directly here. But in this case, let's just go with data and that is equal to response, and then data again, of course, you can also use these properties as well. If you ever have a use case. So let's go here with log now. And if we log the data, we should see that entire array. And there it is. Now, of course, we have all of the product. Now, when it comes to response, what's really, really neat is the fact that Axios actually treats all of the errors like the errors, unlike the fetch. Because if you remember, when it comes to fetch, it only treats the network errors as errors. And in order to showcase that, let's go over here. We have the URL. And now let me mess this one up. And now check it out. Actually, in the console, I right away have the 404 which means that we're not successful. And we also have this object, like I said, and again, data will be located over here in the data property. So if you want to specifically look for the message that is coming from the server, go with error dot and response and data. Now, if you're just going to go with error dot response, you'll see this entire thing. And again, what's really, really cool that it treats, for example, 404 as an error just makes things easier because fetch doesn't do that. So that is going to be standard setup for the get request in Axios, where again, we import Axios, we provide the URL, it returns a promise. So we stick a wait in front of it, most likely, you will set this one up right away as a sync. But technically, remember, you can still use them if you ever want to. We want to invoke that function in use effect. And if we're successful, if we get this data back, of course, we can do whatever functionality we need to do. So for example, if there would be a state variable by the name of product, we can set those products equal to this array, then maybe render them in the component. And hopefully you see where I'm going with this. And when it comes to error, the data is going to be located in error response data. But if you want to see the entire error, maybe you're looking for the status text, then you want to go with error dot and response.